Now we come on to a big class of, and actually I'm using the, which of environmental earth and planet science. These are all connected because they're studying the real world. So they're sort of situated in three space and one time dimensions, which is not so clear you're doing that for particle physics, which are quantum physics, and therefore not, they aren't really geolocation, everything doesn't matter for particle physics. So we start off with um, ISCAT, which is a um, <coughs> um, facility being built in um, in the Nordic regions, and it's uh, basically scattering radar in the atmosphere, measuring what was happens, and using that to investigate the dynamics and structure of the atmosphere. And it uh, currently it operates uh, the so-called TAN radar scattering instruments, and it takes data, which is then recorded and sent back to, to the central facility for analysis. The current version is very small, terabytes per year, and there's no real special challenge. It's not really a, it's not a big data application. But the next generation is going to be uh, five sites, 40 petabytes of data per year, and it's going to run like this maybe for 30 years. So this is going to require really significant high performance computing, and um, also going to require uh, multiple sites to, to be integrated together. And this is not a real-time effect, it uh, can be done in batch mode. And except the real-time is obviously needed to monitor the quality of the data and the operation of the instruments. This next slide here gives the circuit architecture of uh, how, what's going on here. And um, <coughs> we uh, have the mirror sites up here, we, we have the high-performance computer. And the high-performance computer is here, long-term storage, mirror site. And uh, here we have the receiver, um, specialized analysis. Um, it runs through the preprocessors, and then it uh, basically goes to storage. And that's when it comes transmitted to the off-site facility. This is on-site, this is off-site. Whenever you have instruments or sensors, it's very important to decide what processing is done on site and what processing off site. We saw that with the military sensors, because it was, you needed, uh, to, you had this problem, you need a lot of processing, but if that processing is in some hostile environment, that may not be a very sensible place to put it. But if you transmit everything a long way, then this big data from a modern sensor is very difficult to transmit long distances. Here is a reasonably interesting. Um, Case on Brie, which is a European project. And it's basically the idea is there are many projects in the environmental area, and um, they need to be um, try to reuse uh, ideas between the infrastructures that support them. So this is a, a collaboration between multiple different um, uh, environmental related um, instruments, including the ISCAP, the one we just did. And it's developed a reference model, which has uh, got the ontologies for the metadata and the standards for specifying what's going on. And then uh, it then is then applied into these um, six closely coupled projects and two loosely coupled projects, which are given on the next slide. And the idea, of course, is to improve, promote reuse um, of the, um, the not unnecessary current duplication of effort in the infrastructure. So there's six uh, projects. We might we should go through these projects to show what they do. There is a distributive infrastructure which is monitoring greenhouse gases through atmosphere, ecosystem, and ocean network of sensors. <coughs> Argo is a global ocean observatory system which is uh, got a, which is global but has a European component. ISCAT, we just did, it's the largest of these, uh, these systems. LifeWatch, we actually did earlier. Um, EPAS is an earthquake volcano and surface dynamics tectonic, tectonics observatory. And EMSO is a seafloor observatory inside uh, under the ocean. 
the long-term monitoring of connectivity, ocean ecosystems, which feeds into climate change and other types of studies. And then it uh, has um, links to, to two other projects, CEOS, the uh, Arctic o Ocean Earth Observing System, and IAGOS, which is Aircraft for Global Observing Systems. So these are all a mixture of environmental and earth science projects, which, uh, well, I guess even polar science if you do the Arctic Earth, which are linked together by the desire to maximize reuse of infrastructure and ideas and metadata and things like that. Um, here's a very generic architecture. You can see it's pretty generic. It's even more generic than the NIST architecture. We have community support. Then we have data processing, data creation, data acquisition, and data access. So these are some critical components. And so that, um, that's reasonably um, uncontroversial, I would think. And then we have actually for each of the um, subsystems, um, and a picture of their particular architecture, which are not necessarily drawn in the same way. Uh, like here we have ICAST, which has the different observers, ecosystem stations, atmosphere stations, ocean ships. Then these get fed into centers for each of those areas, a central analysis and coordination office. So this is really not a system architecture, but a project architecture, how the different components are linked together. LifeWatch, uh, we uh, discussed earlier, Project 25. and. Um, Again, and this is a pretty generic type of uh, discussion about how the processing and the community and the curation are linked together. Uh, here's EMSO, which has these um, uh, seafloor observatories. And again, this is a project diagram showing how the, uh, how the different activities are coordinated with a data center for various processes, local centers, observatories, autonomous instruments giving time series, and linkage to other projects with again community. And here we have again the same categories which were identified by Andre as the critical categories of, of infrastructure. Now we come to uh, Euro Argo, which is the European version of the Argo Global Ocean Observatory System. Notice how we have the ONGRI categories, data access, community support, data processing, more on community support, data acquisition, data creation. So here with the data, here previously the data was at the bottom, now it's at the side, it's coming in through here, and it's got a um, a lot of um, community and resources doing the different types of conversion that's necessary. So that's the end of Andre, and um, we now move on to the. I mean, uh, sorry, ISCAT is the other research, other infrastructure in Andre, but we already did this architecture, so we don't repeat it here. Now we have uh, an application which I which. Uh, we actually have some details of that later on in this um, in this course. So we have um, this is Creases, a project led by Kansas for remote sensing of ice sheets, and um, the information gotten by this project um, is actually very important in feeding into the work on climate change because an aspect of climate change is what happens due to the Arctic and Antarctic. Recently, actually, in the news, there's been lots of discussion of uh, various ships getting, various funny things happening about ships getting caught in the ice and things like that. And uh, and so whether climate change sometimes makes things colder and sometimes makes things colder in the winter and hotter in the summer, I don't know. Anyway, we're, we're just, this is a very straight, this is an uncontroversial science project which is trying to quantify what we know about Arctic and Antarctic um, uh, glaciers by measure and, and ice sheets by measuring their the, the details. And this radar is able to penetrate into the ice and measure, for instance, the bed. It's also meant, it can also penetrate through snow layers to find the annual 
changes in snow from the from the layers you get at each year. Um, it's interesting that this application is dominantly MATLAB based, like many engineering signal processing um, problems are. It involves um, uh, radar images produced, which um, because that in remote regions you can't use the internet to transmit, you typically write them to disk and ship the disk back. And um, there's lots, and these disks actually don't last very long because they get pretty roughly treated due to the harsh environment. And we keep on having to replace these disks. Um, the, these um, ice sheet uh, bed depths are analyzed by means processing, which we'll discuss later on. Uh, it's all the data is taken in trips, which might take a few weeks in length, and gather 50 to 100 terabytes of data. Uh, future data will be uh, order of magnitude more, and um, other issues that are involved here are load power because you would like you always have a power budget in the in these remote regions, so use of GPU systems is important. Um, you also tend to use what GIS here, geographic information system, to display the data which has been taken. Here's a typical example of um, glacier bed with lots of confusing additional signals. Here's the real seabed at the bottom here, 3,100 meters, sorry, glacier bed. And here's the aircraft taking the radar 500 meters above. This particular case, the goal is to identify this bed. This is another GIS taken from this experiment, showing how um, the different um, aircraft flights are shown here in blue or red, depending on whether it's a DC-8 or a Twin Otter, because they use multiple aircraft. And then they um, look in detail of the, from this GIS view as to, uh, it shows what the, tra the tracking of the aircraft, and then you can look at the data and find out, uh, click on these various flight paths and find out the data and look at its quality and so on. Here's a typical example of actually clean data uh, with some automatic um, method used to identify the green is the top, the, um, the, and the red is the actual bed. I guess it is pretty non-trivial. It is not uh, constant depth. So this is air, ice, and here's ice, medium, rocks.